from across this gorgeous planet. We are one church, many paths, one mountain, where our mission is what Dr. Mark Offney and Barbara Marks Hover call the planetary awakening in love through a unique self symphony. And together, we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. I am Christina Tahel, the co-executive producer, along with Krista Josepha and Kirsten Zohar, and I am delighted to be here with you today. I welcome all the new people. Please do share that you are new in the chat box. We want to hear from you. When you do chat, chat to everyone by checking that your chat settings say all panelists and attendees and not just all panelists. Use the chat function to say hi, to let us know where you're from and to resonate the Dharma. In one church, many pass one mountain. We are connected, we are whole, and we are expressions of the entire process of creation. We are activating a new humanity and we are awakening as a new species. Homo amor, the fulfillment of Homo sapien. We are a church, a synagogue, a mosque, a temple, a zendo. We are all of it. No one is excluded, everyone is included and we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse awakening within us. Welcome home, everyone. We are overjoyed to be with you today in week 201. Let everyone know about One Church, Many Paths, One Mountain. We are doing this primarily through word of mouth and leadership around church is absolutely a sacred opportunity. On YouTube, we are One Church, Many Paths, One Mountain. On Facebook, we are facebook.com forward slash onechurch.world. And right now we are streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook. So take a moment, copy either of the links from the Zoom chat box and share the live links on your favorite social media channels, please. After church, we will send you an email to invite your friends and family and go ahead and just forward that email right after church. Spend time on our website, www.onechurch.world. On the top menu of the homepage or the bottom of each page, you will find our membership links. With that, I give you a little bit of what to expect during today's communion. We'll begin with a Dharma recap, then Dr. Mark will set our intention, and David will resonate the evolutionary love code that we are working with. We then move into prayer, then evolutionary sermons with Dr. Mark, and often with a piece from Barbara Marks Hubbard. Then Krista invites us to commit our outrageous acts of love and to contribute our gifts to this revolution. And then when we close, we bring everyone on for goodbyes. Mark wrote what he called evolutionary love codes. Mark and Barbara studied the codes together, often comparing them to Barbara's own 52 codes for conscious self evolution. These codes grew out of their radical commitment over 100 collective years, crystallizing the new story of humanity, quote, evolving the course of consciousness and culture, which is the source code of love, unquote. Know that each church is a standalone and every week's church does build on the week before. One church, many paths, one mountain is radically committed to telling the new story. Here goes my Dharma recap from last week. On the revolutionary need for evolutionary church. In this time between stories, 
as we begin to be the powers we used to attribute to gods, we choose to be radical evolutionaries of outrageous love. We choose to articulate the new universe story, and we choose to nurture the deeper union of humans and the divine. We need to be revolutionaries in this time between stories, to turn to each other and say, I need you, I need your help. How are we to change the world without evolutionary partners? We are pioneering souls. We are motivated by pleasure and we discover not only are human beings motivated by pleasure, but that reality itself is driven by pleasure, by pleasure, joy, and beauty. We discover that reality is an evolution of value and that life has self-evident meaning. And we find ourselves trembling before evolution, quivering before di divinity, breathing in the whole story of creation. We find that reality has self-evident meaning that we are keeping biblical promises, that we are growing into wise men and wise women with ever greater beauty and ever greater love, carrying the genius of all that came before us together. Reality does have self-evident value when you're participating in a genuine value of reality. Means and ends collapse into one. The path is the destination. We discover our skin is full of billions of nerve endings and the evolutionary impulse that lives in us in person turning to the entire story of evolution. William Blake understood when he said, eternity is in love with the productions of time. The infinite is intimate. The evolution of intimacy is sourced in the infinite. Evolution is the evolution of intimacy. Yet there's global crisis, paralysis, a failure of global coherence, and we desire to emerge global coherence through a shared story, a shared set of first principles, or what we call a global ethos for a global civilization. Our work is happening around Eros and outrageous love, and it's all so precious. We're putting out a great library. We host a yearly Dharma intensive. In the Eros Project, the Outrageous Love Project, the Unique Self Institute, and the Intimacy Institute. We nurture each other, we pray, open our hearts, step into blown open practices. We return to the mind of God. From those open hearts, we dive into evolutionary love codes, find massive creativity, find that we are not okay that amongst so many other crises, the planet doesn't have clean drinking water. The evolutionary love code is sometimes a first principle the basis of the new story. And is sometimes a first principle as it applies to COVID-19, to cancel culture, to Black Lives Matter, or to how we see the first principles, how they need to reformulate and how we participate in the evolution of love. A person needs a home. This is our home in manifest reality. We need to be together as the leading edge of evolutionary love in order to articulate a politics of evolutionary love, a politics of pleasure. As Barbara Marks Hubbard said in last week's 200th communion, I have been missing this my whole life. With that, I invite us to more deeply enter into the sacred space of one church, many paths, one mountain. And I turn my word to you, beloved Dr. Mark Goffney. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God, oh my God. And we're gonna hear a special amour today, I think from 
a new holy gang from Holland, from Paul and Enica and Veronica and Petrus. Right, so I'm hoping we're gonna hear that on more. Wow, it is so good to be with everyone. So good to be with everyone. Right, so good to be with everyone. Yay. How many people, I'm just gonna go to the chat box for a second. How many people were with us this past week, right, at the festival? Yay. How many, how many, who was with us? Who else, who else, who else, who else? Right, who else, who else, right? Yay, Let's just feel it, right? And if you weren't with us, we missed you, right? We missed you enormously. And wow, right, what an incredible week we had and how fabulous it is to be here. What are we doing here? We're setting our intention. We're setting our intention. And I want, with permission, right, to introduce, to introduce a new chant, you know, for this moment in time. And it's a chant that we did together at the festival. And it's about what this moment of time is. And the words are, kol ha'olam kulo, the whole world is walking on a very narrow bridge. And if someone has the words with them and they can put it in the chat box, that'd be fantastic. The whole world is walking on a very narrow bridge. Vaha'ikar, and the essence is not to be afraid, not to be afraid at all. We're at this moment of pandemic. And if you wanna get a sense of where we are in the world, the pandemic will not be over in the next month or two or three. We will almost inevitably be in some form of lockdown around the world, some form of masks, some form of schools not quite being able to open in many places, some form of the flu season coming and it's a new strain of virus. It'll probably be six, probably February. Right, we'll have a vaccine, then it will take time for the vaccine to take effect. So we're not actually at the end of the pandemic, we're in the middle of it. It's gonna slow down, but it's happening. People are dying. It's serious, it's real. People are in incredibly painful places of being unable literally to pay the rent. Landlords are now demanding rent. Government subsidies are running out. People are in life and death situations all over the map. People are also losing their basic economic security all over the map, which means fierce anxiety. Most importantly though, the first principles are what we wanna call the first values, and we're gonna talk about that today, that are needed to move through this moment are not in place. We're in a Da Vinci moment. We're in a time between worlds and a time between stories as we say every week. And every week we come together as revolutionaries, literally as revolutionaries, fiercely awake, right, alive. We are the first principles. Before we articulate them, we have to be them, we have to live them. And the core of the first principles is the envisioning of a new human and a new humanity of a new possibility for the human being and a new possibility for humanity. We're gonna talk about that today and why that is probably the greatest moral imperative of this time. Yes, we have to respond and that's the obvious immediate response to every person, breathe life into every person who is brokenhearted or broke right, or dying or, or dead into the world. If you looked at the last set of surveys, for example, the United States on depression, you have one of, out of four ages 18 to 24 who contemplated suicide. Why? Why? It's not the pandemic exactly. At the pandemic, and we're gonna talk about this more today, accentuates the fault lines in society that are already there. Did everyone get that sentence? See if you can get that sentence again. Right? The pandemic accentuates the fault lines in society that are already there. And I want to identify some of them today and identify these first principles and first values that move us beyond. But before that, before that, we'll get there. This is 
And that's why we started together, one church, many paths, one mountain. We called it Evolutionary Church, and we're working on the best name. But we're many paths, one mountain. We are a revolution. Right? We're not a spiritual group. We're not a political group. We're not an economic group. We're all of it. We're a politics of evolutionary love. Right? We're articulating love as religion, but actually articulating first principles and first values that can actually take us through to the next level. And if you don't want to be Da Vinci and Marcelo Ficino, and if you don't want to take responsibility for evolving the source code, and you're looking for a quick fix, you're in the wrong place. So total great to have you, but you, but you wandered into the wrong place. But if, if you really, you're willing to play a larger game, you're willing to play a larger game beyond is it personally satisfying for you. Because ultimately, this is going to be the most personally satisfying thing in the world. Ultimately, there's nothing like it. There is no joy and there is no pleasure, like the pleasure of evolving the source code. But that's what we're here for. Okay? So are you in? If you're in, just write, I'm in. But just let's feel. Let's be in together. Let's be in together. Okay, who's in? Who's in? Right? Who's in? Like for real, in. In and all the way in. Right? Right, we're in, all the way in, like we're in, right? We're inside. We made a distinction this week. What's the distinction between self-help, right, and transformation? Self-help is what can I get out, right? Let's catch the distinction of the chat box. It's a beautiful distinction, isn't it? Self-help is what can I get out of it? Transformation is how can I step so deeply in that, oh, my God, right, I just blow open. But I, I want to say something gently to all of you who weren't with us and to all of you who were with us, right? Because we all experience in different ways. But it really is a very narrow bridge. And a very narrow bridge means that in one conversation, you can fall off. In one conversation, you can raise the stakes too high, right? In, in one missed moment, right? Because of the tension, because of the accumulation, right? I've watched people in the last four or five months around me right? Near and far break, break, crack. And they're, they still, they're still functioning and they're doing the facade, but they've cracked. You can feel the crack. You can feel the crack. It's a big deal, right? To make it through, what happens is in a pandemic, the fault lines that are already there get accentuated and deepened. It's a big deal. It's Gesher Tsarim Od. It's a very narrow bridge. You can fall from one side to the other. So, so how do you do it? How do you find your way through? You find your way through by actually getting rid of all the fears. And it's the fear that I'm not enough. And it's the fear that I'm not loved. And it's the fear that I'm not honored. And it's the fear that my life doesn't matter. And it's the fear that I'm an extra on the set. And it's the fear that I'm insignificant. I actually begin to know you love me. You love me. I turn to reality. I turn to my beloved and say, you love me. Not I love you. You see the difference? Not I love you. You love me. You love me. I know you love me. Right? I look at you. I don't, I'm not waiting for you to say I love you. Right, we're all waiting. Right? We're all waiting. And there's this implicit, subtle threat. If you don't say I love you to me in the right way, in the right form, in a way right where I feel you did it, I'm going to leave. No. No, you love me. Right? In our deepest, closest relationships, you love me. Rama says to Sita, you love me. Krishna says to Radha, you love me. God says to Goddess, you love me. Right? So who's willing to move from I love you to you love me? You willing to make that move? Who's up? We up for that move? Let's just turn to each other and say, you love me. And not I love you. I'm not, there's, no, there's no I love you test. Let's get rid of the I love you test. We've all got an I love you test going on. Okay, let's get rid of our I love you test. Who's willing to do that? Anyone up for that? Can we get rid of that? Get to get rid of it, right? right we're just going to completely get rid of it. Right, I'm going to take a look in the chat box and say, who's getting rid of it here, right? We're completely getting rid of the I love you test. No, I love you test. You love me. You love me. And we got to gather our moments. Right? I got a beautiful email. and I'm not going to say the person's name, but I see he's with us here today. And I'm so happy to see you, brother. Right? It was a dear, dear friend of mine, student and friend, and we did a, a, a deep dive together in a course I gave some 16 years ago, and he got falsely accused of something, right? a, a serious crime that he would have gone to prison for, for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. Right? He told me he was innocent. 
I know him, I trust him. And we stood together in it. We literally stood together and I had my breaks my heart. And he wrote me an email this morning, remembering that day 16 years ago where we held hands, right? And we were waiting for the verdict. And I remember the joy. I don't think I've ever experienced joy exactly like that quality of joy, right? It's not because it was unbelievable. And we were ecstatic and he was correctly, right, exonerated, right? Like it was, it was ecstatic. I mean, literally we danced. I remember dancing, just completely dancing, right? But we've got to gather those moments. We've got to collect those moments, right? What happens is, right, the moments disappear. We can't collect them. We've got to collect the moments of joy. We've got to collect the goodness. We've got to collect the delight. Right? And from that place, we have the energy to not fall off the bridge. We let go of the fear, right? Who's willing to let go of the fear that I'm not enough? Who's willing to let go of it? I got to let go of it. I'm willing to let go of it. I'm, I'm going to let go of it. Let go of the fear that you're not madly loved. Let go of the fear, right, that my life doesn't matter. Your life matters. Your life matters insanely and enormously, right? Right? Do you get that? Your life matters beyond imagination, right? All of reality intended you, right? Feel into that. So no fear. No fear. You're in the right place. You're in the right time. Every place you've been, you needed to be. And we can walk through this pandemic. We can walk through it with enormous power and enormous joy and enormous love. Thank you, Christina Amelon, for your gorgeous Dharma recap. And David's going to, in a minute or two, do the code with us. But I want to first, just with permission, right, with permission, I want to introduce the chant. And what we're going to do this week and next week, and maybe the week after till September, we're going to do just one church. We're going to end, you know, on time. We're going to do an hour, right? It's August. Right? And then we're going to kind of, think together in the next two weeks how to restart first principles in september and we want to do it and i want to share with, with, with you a little bit about that just for a second now we want to do it in a way that we can actually energize church so what's happening is people are coming to first principles and then not coming to other things because first principles is available we want to do it and we want to just want to invite that everyone who does first principles with us actually joins actually joins many paths one mountain and actually helps helps Right. And Barbara, you spoke about this every week and did it so beautifully. So I just want to invite everyone, if we can put a link in the chat box, right? Right. And we're going to put it in a few times today. Join. Don't just show up and participate. Join. Do 25 bucks a month. Do 50 bucks a month. So we can actually monetize this. So we can actually hold it steady. Okay. We just got to hold it steady. We need to do that. So actually find your energy, right? Find your joy and actually step in. And, right, do $50 a month, whatever it is, whatever the amount is. So you can actually be in this. We can participate in it, to get in it together, and we can make it rock. And so if you're doing first principle, you're doing one church, make it yours, right? This is not a place you show up, right? This, this is where we're literally holding this Da Vinci, but we're, we don't have the Medicis, right? We are the Medicis. We're going to do it grassroots Bernie Sanders style, right? Bernie Sanders style all the way. Right? A bunch of us, we make small contributions. We actually allow it to happen. Right? I take no funds from this right? at all. So it's not, I've got no personal, right? this is for us. This is for you. Okay. This is for she. This is for we. Okay. Who, who can, can you feel that? And can I just ask you guys a question? Just, can I just be like really just vulnerable for a second? Is it okay? And I'm completely cracked open by this weekend. So I'm completely, completely vulnerable. Okay. Could you be with me for a second? Do you trust me? Do you trust me that this is for us? So if you trust me and I trust you, do you trust me? Then step in. Okay? You trust me, guys? I trust you. Okay? We're in this together. This is ours. This is ours to do. I can't do it. I, I can't do it myself. Right? I'll crack. Okay? I can't do it without you. Let's hold hands. Let's do it together. Okay? Okay? Okay. Kul haolam kulo Gesher tsar meon Let's catch the words in the chat box. Kul haolam kulo Gesher tsar meon Gesher tsar meon 
There's one bridge across the mountain. And the whole world's walking on a very narrow bridge in each of us in our personal lives. And reality itself is literally on a narrow bridge like it's never been before. We face catastrophic risk. We face existential risk. And yet we have the capacity to actually scale the mountain and, and manifest a utopia like never has been seen on earth. And we're going to talk specifically about a dharma today and a new first principle and first value. But the essence is not to be afraid. Not to be afraid at all. We all get to contract. We all get to have moments of, oh my God, it's so painful. But we walk through them. We collect the joy. We collect the joy. Do you get that? Get that? What it means to collect the joy? You get that phrase? Right? I'm going to write it for you or someone will write it for me. Right? Right? We collect the joy. Collect the joy. Ekul ha'olam kulo. And Gesher Tsar Meod, and Gesher Tsar Meod, together around the world, and Gesher Tsar Meod. The whole world is walking on a very narrow bridge, on a very narrow bridge. And the essence is the essence is to have no fear to have no fear at all the essence is the essence is to have no fear at all and the essence is the essence is to have no fear to have no fear at all the essence is the essence is to have no fear at all the essence is the essence is to have no fear at all hey and the essence is say the essence is collect the moments you oh you love me the essence is that you love me so let's have no Fear at all. Hey, man, nay, 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 David, give us a code, brother. Have no fear at all. Give us a code. All your heart, all your soul. Davidness. Give us a code. Thank you so much, Dr. Mark. I'm feeling my heart. I'm feeling my heart so deeply right now. It's beautiful to feel my heart. You know, this week we went through the Outrageous Love Festival. And I, at the beginning of the week, I felt my heart was so full of fear. And I was struggling. And, uh, you know, a lot of it had to do with my pain in my body. 
And just when I was kind of looking over the edge, walking across that bridge and feeling that fear, I got a text from Shahat, who's part of our team, right? And I could look up again and keep walking and keep walking. And Dr. Mark, I'm just so grateful of the community that you've created here that always keeps me coming back and keeps drawing me to move across that bridge. So I'm so grateful. So as we, I re resonate this code, let's find our way across that bridge together, friends. Reality is pleasure. The pleasure of transformation is the highest pleasure. The highest pleasure of transformation is the transformation of everything, which is the pleasure of power. Reality is pleasure. The pleasure of transformation is the highest pleasure. The highest pleasure of transformation is the transformation of everything, which is the pleasure of power. And with that, I turn my word back to you, beloved Dr. Mark. Gorgeous, David, gorgeous. And let's get that, let's get that gorgeous. Let's get that David gorgeous. And let's get that words, those words in the chat box. Can we get those words in the chat box? Oh my God. And bring us an Amor. Bring us an Amor. Amor, it's insights are aligned with love. And I saw a note from Kirsten, which I'm not sure we're going to get the Amor that I said before, which I just heard this morning. But whichever Amor we get, if we don't get it this week, we'll get it next week. Right? We do Amor, and Amor means love. And Amor right, is love in the sense of the text from Solomon and the truth of the exterior and interior sciences, which is its insides are aligned with love. Now, to get that that's true, we call that the ontologizing of love. That's a first principle. That's a first value, right? It's insides are aligned with love. It's not a metaphor. It's not a declaration. It's not new age. It's not fundamentalist. It's the best reading of reality that we have based on all the evidence, pre-modern, modern, and post-modern merged together in a new whole. Reality is actually a love story and evolution is the love story of the universe. And it's, it's written in the text of the sciences both the evolutionary sciences, both complexity theory, which is the mathematics of intimacy, right? Systems theory and the interior sciences. So every week our chant is Amar, love. But what we mean is love is not weak, love is strong. It's the strongest force that ever was. It's not ordinary love. It's outrageous love. It's not a mere human sentiment. It's the heart of existence itself. And therefore the only politics, possible as a politics of love. And the only religion possible is a re -ligaire, right, is a religion of love. So take us inside to the chant of more. Oh, we got the one we wanted. Oh my God, that's awesome. Yay. Petrus, Veronica. Amor, 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 amor. insights are aligned with love, right? Can you feel that everybody, right? It's insights are aligned with love. 
It's so crazy gorgeous, right? So crazy gorgeous. Cha. So we're about to pray. We're about to pray. What does it mean to pray? To pray has nothing to do with fundamentalism. To pray is to know the nature of cosmos. I sometimes tell a story of a beautiful exchange I had with a beautiful man, right? If you've heard of him, tell me his name is, is and I'll ask everyone just to mute themselves, a couple of people unmuted, just so we have a clear sound. Thank you so much. Who's heard of John Wellwood? Anyone? Anyone know John Wellwood? I'm going to go in the chat box, right? What a beautiful amour. Thank you, Petrus, Veronica, Paul, Enica. Thank you so much, right? John Wellwood. John Wellwood's a, a fantastic man who passed away. He was good friends with uh, Zion, my son's beautiful mother, Mariana Kaplan. And Mariana has written many books on the, the it's kind of Bill Moyers of the spiritual path. And John was her mentor. And John came to, to meet me, fully prepared not to like me, right? which was clear when he walked in um, about a decade ago. And we just started talking in the kitchen and we just, we loved each other. We just had a, a, just a wonderful time. John wrote a book called The Psychology of Awakening, one of the single most important books. And John initiated a phrase in his book, The Psychology of Awakening, which was wake up and grow up. And what he meant was, and it's, it's, it's unbelievably important, there was this sense in waking up, right? As the West met Eastern enlightenment, there was a sense that you could wake up, you could have this experience of radical opening, right? Of deep enlightened consciousness, and then you were home. And so people thought this is going to bypass psychology. It's going to bypass working out the contractions, right? It's going to bypass, and, and people died because of it. People actually went off their medication. People didn't do the real work of actually the separate self-work of working through whatever the contractions are. And you need both wake up and you need grow up. So to grow up is to work through, in John's understanding, right, to work through your own psychological maturity. And to wake up is to have an actual experience of om mani padme om, an experience of full waking up. But it's even deeper than that. And my dear friend, Ken, Ken Wilbur, right, Ken and I have talked about wake up, grow up in a different way, right, for many years. And Ken's very, very, very connected to developmental theory. So Ken understands growing up as developmental levels of consciousness to move from egocentric, right, to ethnocentric, to world-centric, to cosmocentric, right? We've actually revisioned this. So John, Ken, and myself, and we've understood it, right, at a third level. We've now, in our understanding, have taken from my, my dear friend John and from Ken, and we now understand wake up, grow up is actually to wake up to your true self. But when you deeply wake up, you realize the unique dimension of your true self, the utter uniqueness, which is reality uniquely speaking through you. So to wake up is actually to wake up to your unique self, which is the unique voice of your true self. The true self is the field of consciousness. Your unique self is the unique expression of that field. So to wake up is to wake up always to your unique self. You can't wake up to true self. Classical enlightenment doesn't work actually because every true self is a unique self. Who gets that in the chat box? That's a big deal. You get that? Yeah, that's a big deal. So waking up is always waking up to unique self. And growing up, right, is actually, you don't just grow up to a, a level of consciousness. It's not quite true. You actually grow up uniquely, your unique self. And my dear friend and beloved student and colleague and a partner in the center, Zach Stein, we're writing a book called In a Unique Voice, where we show how basically when you grow up through levels of consciousness, it's actually your unique self, which is actually growing up to the highest levels of consciousness. And when you get to the higher and the highest levels of consciousness, what we call in developmental thought, second tier consciousness, you begin to live from your unique self. That actually the demarcating characteristic, the sign of developmental growth is actually you step into your unique self. You actually live from that uniqueness, right? In communion with the larger unique self symphony. So actually to wake up means to wake up to your unique self, right? Because you're blown open as the unique expression of consciousness. And then to grow up is to grow up, right? As your unique self into the most fully present, developed, evolved consciousness of cosmocentric intimacy, your unique self, 
is giving its gift to the entire cosmos. You feel the pain of the cosmos. You feel the responsibility of the cosmos. You feel the call of the cosmos. You know, you can actually say, and let's see if we can find it in the chat box. You can actually say, I am evolution. You actually get that. That's what it means. But I am uniquely evolution. Right? I'm a unique configuration of evolutionary love. That's what it means to grow up. To grow up means I go through all the levels of consciousness. I get to cosmocentric intimacy and I realize who am I? Who am I? I'm a unique configuration of evolutionary love. That's who I am. Okay. So this conversation, which I've had with John and with Ken, and now we've, we've added a whole new dimension to it. So I'm, I'm showing that this is our context. Okay, these are first values. These are first principles. But then in my conversation with John, we went deeper. And we started to talk about how we practice. So John said, you know, one of the things, you know, you know, that made me suspicious of you is because I understand that you talk about prayer. And I couldn't believe I heard you were intelligent and you're talking about this dogmatic, pre-modern idea. You're talking about prayer. Really? Why are you talking about prayer? And, and my, my dear colleague, Ken Wilbur, in his book, Up From Eden, essentially dismisses prayer, right? As a, right? As a, as a, right? And this whole notion of the personal God, right? Is dismissed, right? Both John and Ken. So I said to, to I want to share this with you really deeply. And right? I said to John, I said to John, John, why do you believe in awareness? Right? Because he said, I do awareness. That's my practice. I meditate on awareness. I said, John, why do you believe in awareness? He said, because it's a realization. I actually realize it in my body. It's not a dogma. So he said, John, prayer is also a realization. And John looked at me, and John is the most humble, beautiful, you know, this beautifully, beautiful man. He just got it. He said, oh, prayer is a realization. So prayer is a realization of what, my friends? It's a realization that she never drops you. It's a realization that you can be walking on a four by four plank on the ground and you're not afraid at all. But when you're in the air, when it's 20,000 feet in the air and you're walking across that narrow bridge, you're, you're in dead fear because you might fall off. No, no, no. But actually the realization of God in the second person is the realization she never drops you. You can never fall off. Every place you fall, you fall into her hands. And I was talking to my, my beloved right, friend and brother and, and brilliant, integral, gorgeousness, Pandit. And I said, Ken, this is back in 2004. I said, can I tell you a story? And he said, of course. And I said, let me tell you about Lady Isaac of Berdichev. And you all know the story, some of you know it. And he would make a blessing. And he would say, blessed are you. And he couldn't even get to the rest of the blessing. It's, it's blessed are you, God, King of the world. There's a whole formula. He would go, blessed are you, you, you. You, 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 you. And he would faint in ecstasy from the realization of God in the second person, which is God as the infinity of intimacy that holds us in every second. And so we're going to turn to God and we're going to pray now. We're going to pray for the world. We're going to pray for ourselves. We're going to pray for our friends. We're going to bring before she everything, right? Our holy and our broken Hallelujah. So take us inside, right? The holy and the broken. Hallelujah. Yes. Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you?
the truth I didn't come to fool you And even though it all went wrong I'll stand before the Lord of song With nothing on my tongue But hallelujah 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 Oh my god let's meet each other in the chat box and let's ask for everything let's pray and literally ask for everything joyce i pray for those trapped deep in addiction or depression right that love heals all thank you joyce amen and you know what friends right let's just get just let's shout an amen if you're up for it and amen means by the way amen is not a fundamentalist amen is the word aleph mem nun in hebrew and amen means i trust right amen is trust and amen also means the nursing mother. So it means I trust that she's never going to drop me. And amen means practice. I'm going to practice all the time. And amen means art. Oman, it means art. It's the art of practicing so that I know that you love me and she's never going to drop me. And the infinity of intimacy is holding me in every second. So if you're up for it after every prayer, let's just shout out an amen. Right? Suzette, right? I pray that despite right? The distance, right? People keep connecting on a deeper level, right? Our, our festival last week showed, right? It's completely possible, right? We broke through the chat box. We broke through the, right? We literally felt each other right next to each other. Jacqueline, I pray that we may not fear as we cross the narrow bridge together, holding hands, right? You love me. You love me. Paul, I pray for the future change in all places on earth distorted, right? By idiocy. We're ready to take over. Let's step up, right? I pray, Penny Lane, to find my partner and to be to love and be loved forever, right? And Penny Lane, yes, yes, yes for your partner and you're already loved forever. And may it incarnate in human form in exactly the way you want it. Oots, I pray for a new thrust of health to continue my fight for intravenous vitamin C as a treatment for COVID-19. Terry, I pray that my son Topher feel held and not feel lonely, right, while being alone, amen. Amen, right? Amen, right? Krista, I pray for people to find the pleasure of power and step in, right? All the way, one communion, right? Paul, right? And feel the amen means I trust, right? I trust, right? I trust, right? I pray, right, that our complicated, fragile systems with their win-lose metrics, which is what we've identified as the core cause of the breakdown, right? Right, says Kirsten, right? That that end and we kind of move, right, to unique self-symphony, and we're all praying in every prayer. And we're going to weave all the prayers together. And we're going to lift them to the sky. We're going to lift them to the sky. All right? Yay. Oh, my God, right? Oh, my God. Thank you. So, friends, let's look at our code. Let's look at our code together. Reality is pleasure. The pleasure of transformation is the highest pleasure. The highest pleasure of transformation is the transformation of everything. which is the pleasure of power, okay? Let's see if we can get it again, okay? Right? And I think I need new glasses, right? The pleasure of transformation is the highest pleasure. So first, reality is pleasure. Two, the pleasure of transformation is the highest pleasure. Three, the knowing that my transformation transforms the whole thing is the highest pleasure of transformation. And the pleasure of transformation is the pleasure of power. Now let's add one more thing to the code, okay? I'm gonna add one more thing to the code, and this is, this is the essence of the code. We think that in order to transform the whole thing, 
I've got to be Barack Obama, right? I've got to be Angela Merkel, right? I've got to be, right? I've got to be in some position of obvious power. But actually, the people in positions of obvious power often have no power at all. And the true nature of a human being is actually to know the true nature of reality. And the true nature of reality is that actually the entire universe lives in me. I'm not living in a universe that's just not true scientifically. Actually, all of reality is living me and lives in me. Muons, hadrons, protons, electrons, cells, fungi, plant structures, fungi structures, animal structures, eukaryote structures, right? Mammalian structures, they all live in me, right? All of it. And, and actually the entire lithosphere, right? The entire biosphere, right? The atmosphere, right? The hydrosphere, right? It all lives in me, right? Actually, that's actually true, right? All of the, the environment that I live in, right? The universe I live in actually lives in me and through me. It's literally, as the physicist John Archibald Wheeler said correctly, it's literally a participatory universe. And a participatory universe demands a participatory politics and a participatory spirituality, right? I'm a participant in the universe. It's a participatory universe, which means that if I actually know myself, the Delphic Oracle, know thyself, I know that I have immense power, that my power impacts the whole thing. And it's not if I become prime minister, right? It's actually within my own personal transformation. I want to get this together, okay? I want to get this together. If within my own personal transformation, I can release that contraction, and it's the contraction that's always been with me, and it's accentuated. I want to get this, everyone. This is a big deal. What's happening in COVID-19, what's happening in this pandemic is two things. And I want to get it really clearly because this is a big deal. A, all our forms of pseudo eros, or many of them, you still got Netflix binging, okay? But most forms of pseudo eros are gone, right? The kind of pseudo eros partying, the pseudo eros gossiping, the pseudo eros going out for dinner, the pseudo eros of having, you know, a lot of extra money change around, the pseudo eros of not feeling actually the pain of the other, because I actually think about it occasionally, but basically I split it off for me, right? The pseudo eros of, right, all the things I do, the arrangements I make with life to avoid the pain of emptiness, because I feel alone, because I'm in a relationship and I feel alone in the relationship, because I'm not sure I'm loved, I'm not sure I matter. I can't actually find myself inside. There's a low, dull, throbbing pain, and I've got a, a billion strategies, right, which I call your arrangement. It's your pseudo-erotic arrangement to get you through. That's gone, or most of it's gone, right? Now, when I try and replace it in the intensity of the pandemic, then I up my, my addiction at home which is why addiction is going through the roof. So there's ways, right, that, that people who are, which are many of us, who are kind of holding at the edge, we we're, we're, were barely hanging in, right? I had it, right, I was feeling the addiction in me, but I was managing it, and now it breaks out again, or I fall back into addiction. So addictions, right, mental depression, mental health, right? It's breaking down all over the place. But all of us are participating, even if not directly. Even if I'm not directly experiencing addiction, right, I feel this sense of contraction, it's hard. But not only is my pseudo eros not there, listen carefully, lots of my real eros isn't there, right? Lots of the depth, right? right? I can't embrace the people in person I wanted to embrace because lots of it wasn't pseudo eros. And the joy of being with another person, the joy of being touched, right? And just hugging a person and the joy of being in a mall with a crowd of people and feeling human energy and the joy of being, right? Christina Kincaid, remember when we were with Zion? right, at a basketball game in Portland a few months ago. We were, to, we were together, all of us, at the festival last year in person, right? That's not there, right? I got a text from someone who's a, a close friend, right, on, you know, Friday, right before Sabbath, and it said something like, fuck long-distance relationships. 
right? And it was a dear, dear friend, right? Who was, you know, beloved, who was at the festival and like, why aren't we together? Why aren't we all going out for dinner? And we used to have a fabulous dinner after the festival, which was completely joyous, where we would all just kind of be together and we would, we would raise our glasses and it was, it was this, right? We don't have, that was Eros. So not only have we lost our pseudo Eros, we've lost a lot of the places, right? Which were the, the sources of our Eros. Can you feel that? Can you feel that everyone? Okay. So let's be together in this, right? Can we feel it? Can we feel it? Who can feel it? Right? Who can feel it? Who can feel it? Okay. I like, wow. Who can feel it? We can feel that, right? Who can feel it? Right? Right? No one left out, right? If you can step in, right? Don't be, right? Just be with us. If you can feel it, just tell us you can feel it, right? Who else? Right? I was like, wow, right? Can we feel that? It's a big deal, right? So at this moment, right? Brothers and sisters, right? Sacred, holy brothers and sisters, we've got to reach deeper. And this is the place where it's our calling to reach deeper and find our eros again in a way that I never have. I've got to find my unique self. I've got to walk through that contraction. I've got to walk through the pain and it, it accumulates, right? It doesn't happen, right? It accumulates, accumulates. There's not enough time, right? There's not enough contact, right? There's not, a, right? There's not enough of a lot of things. And then, then so many things, right? Cracking and there's so much that we feel and we feel we're going to crack and we go inside and we find the truth of our love. And we go inside and we find the truth and we collect the moments. I wanna call it, we collect the joy. And we can see it in front of us. And we live in it, right? And we hold it, right? And we blow it open. And at that moment, right? At that moment, and we, it's not that we don't crack, we crack and then we find ourselves. Of course we crack, of course we contract. But then in that contraction, we stop everything and we find each other in the contraction. And we walk through it holding hands. So who's willing to hold hands? Who's willing to hold hands? Are you willing to hold hands? Let's hold hands, right? No one's alone. We're holding hands around the world. And we're holding hands not just for each other. We're holding hands for each other to actually walk through this together. But we're holding hands for everyone who doesn't have someone to hold their hand, right? We're reaching out and we're not just Right? We're not just distributing fish. We want to actually share with the world, how do you actually learn to be a fisherman? Meaning first values right? and first principles. Right? And if we've got the description of first values and first principles, let's throw it in the chat box. What's the first value? What's the first principle? Right? It means a first value and a first principle means, right? and let's read it together if you're up for it. This is what we're here to do. First principles express the underlying, eternal, yet evolving, universal principles of value. And I want to invite us, right? We can use between us the word Dharma, but as we face the world and go to change the source code, let's find that term, first principles and first values, okay? Let's actually adopt that. This is a major moment we're adopting that, okay? First principles express the underlying eternal yet evolving, universal principles of value that need to be the rudder of civilization's next stage. First principles are urgently needed personally and collectively to respond to the catastrophic and even existential risk that challenges us, invites us, and demands our response at this moment in time. First principles are ancient, time-honored, and venerable, even as they're evolutionary, emergent, and new. First principles are a weaving together of the most crucial validated truths from all the wisdom streams, pre-modern, modern, and post-modern, into a new whole greater than the sum of the parts. First principles of what we refer to as the new story or a new dharma or a global ethos for a global civilization, right? First principles are implicitly shared by all of the many paths. They're the foundation, right, of the one mountain. We got that, that's us. That's ours to do. Okay, so now I wanna, with your permission, we're gonna finish, I'm, I'm watching the time, we're at exactly time. So I'm gonna take just three, four minutes just to tell you a story. And then we're just gonna look at each other's eyes and. We're gonna to go to how could anyone ever tell you that you are anything less than beautiful? And that's how we're gonna close. But before then, I wanna, with your permission, I wanna tell you a story and I wanna take the Dharma one step up. Can we do that? Are we up for that? We got like three more minutes, is everyone okay? Three more minutes, are we good? Are we good? Okay, I'm not gonna turn off, I'm gonna turn off my video. But I just wanna be voice to voice with you for a second, okay? Just voice to voice. Okay, voice to voice. Let's just find this inside. So here's, here's the deal, I and mean, it's so gorgeous. So my personal transformation, this is the first principle, 
when I contract, and we all contract, there's no one who doesn't contract. When I contract and then I find myself in it, and I'm going shrill and I'm going strident, and I'm getting too sharp, right? And I'm getting angry, and I, I'm, it's accumulating into me and it's bursting through me, right? Then I reach deep inside and I find myself and I expand into my true identity. And I realize, oh my God, you love me. I realize, who am I? What's the answer to the question of who are you? Who are you? I realize, wow, you and you and me, you're an irreducibly unique expression of the love intelligence and love desire and love beauty. That's my identity. That's the initiating and animating eros of all that is that lives in me, as me, and through me. That never was, is, or will be ever again. And as such, there's something for me to do. There's something for me to do. And I want to tell you a story. This is just a short story about a holy teacher, right? Such a holy teacher. And one of the greatest masters of modern times, his name was Colonimus Kalman, right? The master of Piasetsna, which was near Warsaw. And he perished in World War II in, in the Warsaw Ghetto, right? And, and he was called the master of children. And we're all children, right? Right? Child is a verb. We got a child as a verb, right? It's only the, the child who enters the kingdom of heaven. So let's child as wise men and women. And this master would say the children at five years old, right? They already need a master. They need someone to connect their souls to heaven. So we gathered around him and Piasetsna literally, right? A kingdom of children. He had a school with thousands of kids and, and he was their father, their mother, their best friend. And he was moved by the Nazis to the Warsaw Ghetto in 1940. He wrote the most precious book called The Holy Fire, which he would write down on Saturday night, the teachings that he gave on, on Saturday because he didn't write on the Sabbath. And I share with him that principle. And he was killed in the death camp of Treblinka. And so I wanna share with you the story of a, a man who met Colonimus Kalman someone that's so close to my heart and I'm going to do it in the first person. I'm going to say it and I'm going to tell the story about this, this, this master, right? In the first person, the way that my friend, right? Told the story. When his book came out after the war was over, I couldn't believe its beauty. And this is in first person. The person talking here is Shlomo Karlbach, right? A great master of song. And I'm going to tell you the story in his first person voice. When his book came out after the war was over, The Holy Fire, I couldn't believe its beauty. And it so pierced my heart. I asked everyone, where are those kids of that holy master, the precious children who heard these teachings from him every week? I'd love to speak to them. And I was told there was nobody left, nobody. But one day, a few years ago, I was walking down Yarkon. And Yarkon, my friends, is near where I mark, where I lived in Israel. It's the central street in Tel Aviv, right near the beach. And as my friend Shlomo, who passed away many years ago, he writes about his experience that I saw there a hunchback on Yarkon Street in Tel Aviv. A hunchback so broken, so broken. His body was so broken. And his face was beautiful, so handsome, but his whole body was misshapen. He was sweeping the streets. And I had a feeling this person was special. And so I said, Shalom Aleichem, peace unto you. And he re replied to me in the heaviest Polish accent which I remember, I, Mark, remember from my youth. And he said, Aleichem Shalom, peace unto you. And I asked if he was from Poland. And he said, yes, I'm from Piasetsna. And I couldn't believe it. Piasetsna? Have you ever heard of the holy master, Kolonimus Kalman, Piasetsna? And he said to me, what do you mean? Have I, have I heard of him? I've seen him. I, I was a student in his school. I was a child in his school from age five to 11. Wow. I couldn't believe I had finally met one of the children of this great master. And then this holy hunchback went on and he said, he said, I went, when I was 11, I went to Auschwitz, to the death camp of Auschwitz. And I was so strong, they thought I was 17 and I was whipped and hit and kicked. And they broke me, they broke my body and I never healed. And that's why I look the way I do now. I've got nobody in the world, I'm all alone. And he kept on sweeping the ground and my holiest friends, open your hearts. And I said to this man, this holy hunchback on your cone street in Tel Aviv, I said, my sweetest friend, do you know my whole life? I've been waiting to see you a person who saw the master of Piasetsna, a person who was one of his children. Please give me one of his teachings. And the hunchback glared at me. He said, do you think you can be in Auschwitz in a death camp 
for five years and still remember teachings. And he said, yes, I'm sure of it. I know. I know teachings that are real, that are first principles, teachings that come from the heart, never leave the heart. The master's teachings, you can't have forgotten them. And so this hunchback, this holy hunchback said, okay, wait. And he went to the water fountain to wash his hands. And he found a tie and he put on a jacket. And then he came back to me and he said one more time, do you really want to hear the teaching? And I said to him, I swear to you, I'll tell your teaching all over the world. So he began. And holy friends, if you can't open your hearts, he said, I want you to know that there was never such a day as a Sabbath in Piasetsna when I was there. We danced hundreds, maybe thousands of children. And the master would sing and greet the angels. And at the meal, he would teach between every course. And after every teaching, this is what the master would say. And open your hearts, brother and sisters. He would say, after every course, he would say, Kinderlach. Kinderlach, which means children. Kinderlach. Der Grester, der Grester Sachen der Welt is to Emmets in a Teuve. Right? The greatest thing in the world is to do someone else a favor. The Grester Sachen der Welt is to Emmets in a Teuve. Right? The greatest thing in the world is to do someone a favor. And the hunchback sighed, the holy hunchback, and he said, you know, my parents are gone. And my whole family, and there's, there's no one anymore. I have no more family. And oh my God, when I was in Auschwitz and alone, I wanted to commit suicide. I wanted to break so many times. And the last moment, when I would go to the electrified fence, I would stop and I would hear my master say, Kinderlach, Kinderlach, children. The Grester Zachen der Welt is to Emmets and Atova. Right? Right, the best thing, right, the holiest thing in the world is to do someone a favor. And there I was in Auschwitz. Do you know how many favors you can do in a death camp at night? People are lying on the floor crying. And no one even has any strength to listen to their stories anymore. And I would walk from one person to the other and ask, why are you crying? And they would tell me about their children, their wives, their people they'd never see in this lifetime again. And I would hold their hands and I'd cry with them. And then I'd walk to the next person and it would give me strength for another day. When I was at the end and I wanted to kill myself, I'd hear my Rebbe's voice to Grester Zachen de Veltas to Emmet and Atova. And the war was over and I came here to Israel to Tel Aviv and I've got no one in the world. And sometimes I take off my shoes and I walk down to the beach late at night and I go up to my nose in the ocean ready to sink. And then again, I can't help but hear my teacher's voice saying, the Grester Zachen de Welt is to Emmet and Atova. Right? The greatest thing in the world is to do somebody a favor. Remember my precious children, he would say, the greatest thing in the world. And the holy hunchback stared at me for a long time. And he said, do you know how many favors you can do sweeping the streets of the world? Do you know how many favors you can do? And every time my heart closes, and I open my heart. I look at the people who are in my circle, who need me. I'm their angel. To be an angel means you have, you're a messenger. There's an I love you, you can say. There's an you love me, you can do. There's an action you can do. There's a creation you can do that no one else in the world can create but you. It's yours to do. And for us together, it's ours to hold hands. It's ours to love each other madly. We are the first principles. We are homo sapien becoming homo amor. We are the first values, right? We are the Dharma. It's not separate from us. But we're not just committed to, to this fulfill me. We're not just committed to this open my heart. We're committed to opening the heart of the world. We're committed to articulating first principles and first values that can actually take us from a suffering that you can't imagine into a utopia beyond all imagination. And that's our commitment. And that's where we stand. And it's not easy. And in the whole world, the whole world's walking on a very narrow bridge. Right? Va'ikar, but, but the most important thing, right? Lola fachet klal. Don't be afraid at all. Nothing. No fear at all. 
because you can't, you can't fall off the bridge. Because every place we fall, we fall into each other and we fall into she. And even at the moment of death, there's a continuity of consciousness, right? And you know that it goes on and you know that it's not over. Right? How can anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than beautiful? Right? How can anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than whole? Right? We're going we're to chant it together. We're going to turn to Krista and Krista's going to close and tell us how to join and how to become part of it and how to step up. But maybe, you know, actually, maybe Krista, maybe you go first, love. Then we'll end with how could anyone, right? Does that make sense? So we turn to Krista. All right, we turn to Krista. All right, take us inside. Let's do that first. Let's, let's hear from you. Yay. Cha. Cha. Oh, wow. I feel so silent and quiet now after that beautiful, beautiful story. The greatest pleasure in the world is to serve each other, to be there for each other. And last week, our Outrageous Love Festival, I had the honor to be with the Sangha and to experience and in pra practice and embody Outrageous Love together. And as someone said, he called the festival, and this is also our festival here, our one communion here, an experience of an enlightened society and that's how it tasted for me and that's how i experienced it and feeling the possibility of possibilities there how we can be outrageous lovers for each other and this is why we gather here every week together to practice committing outrageous acts of love and then to take that outrageous love into the world into all the dark corners of this world all the places where there's outrageous pain and bring our love that we drink here from this fountain of love and bring it into the world. And this is what we are doing here together, but we need each other to practice together. So our main practice is committing outrageous acts of love. We write outrageous love letters. We tell the stories of outrageous acts of love that we have committed personally, or we tell the stories of someone that we know, or the stories of that we read on the internet. And we gather all of these stories, we post them on our Facebook page. And this is not just a Facebook page, it's actually a gallery of love. It is an expression of our unique self-symphony happening all the time, all over the world. And it's a page of inspiration and a page of acknowledgement, as you can see right here, a beautiful, response to someone's outrageous acts of love saying yes yes celebrating each other's greatness and celebrating each other's acts of love so i want to invite you to join us here to become part of this unique self symphony do your outrageous acts of love but also show up show your face tell your stories and share them here on our facebook page so you can click on the link in the chat box. The Facebook page is called, of course, Outrageous Acts of Love. And you click here on the community page. And this is where all of you are able to post. And make sure that you read each other's posts, you like each other's posts, and comment on each other's posts to remind each other of our greatness. The next way to step in, to come closer, is of course to study the Dharma. We are here every week together drinking from the beautiful first principles that Mark is sharing. But if you want to dive deeper and study deeper and come to a deeper understanding and embodiment of these first principles, I invite you to go to our website, onechurch.world slash membership, where you can find all of the courses. And each course contains hours and hours of Dharma and the value of each course is $297. And you can choose to study those separately, but this is our amazing offer. There are nine courses here and you gain access to all of these courses if you become a member, if you become a member of our One Communion. As Mark said before, it's actually not about what we gain from it ourselves, even though we will experience a lot of personal transformation going through these courses, but it's actually such an opportunity for, to participate in the evolution of love. You can right now become a member for only $25 a month, and we made it so that you can choose your own unique contribution. So I want to invite you to step into your leadership, step into your power, and feel that we are co-creating this global communion together, that each and every one of us is responsible for the growth of this church. This church, 
this communion, it doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to all of us. And we are all responsible to say yes, to not just stand on the sideline, but actually step in and make this happen together. So we need you to step in and contribute with your monthly contribution and become a member. And even better, if you do, you will gain access also to our online community where we share together, we meet each other, we have an awesome writing group, we study together and we meet each other face to face, we look each other in the eyes and that's maybe the most beautiful thing about being in this community is to be able to say, you love me and to remind each other that we are loved and that we love each other through our contractions and holding hands all around the world. So I can't wait to get to know you, to feel you, to connect my heart to your heart and to meet you on the inside. Thank you so much. And with that, I give my word back to you, Mark. How could anyone ever tell you? Thank you, Krista. Thank you so, so much. How could anyone ever tell you, take us inside, that you are anything less than beautiful. Mm -hmm.